you are unique and you have something to give and a way to be that can matter to someone in a way that nobody else can duplicate. Thank you, Terry. A second gift that I want to suggest is the gift of your extras. We all have a lot more than we really, really need. And a lot of what we have could be of value and service to another. And Brian, I'm reminded of you and an exchange that you and I have had just since this last week. And in a moment, the congregation will know why I'm giving you an extra yoga mat, and I actually forgot another one that I have. And John is getting some socks and some hats. And so there's a reason for that. Last week, we had a bunch of mistletoe here that we collected from Stallion Oaks Ranch, our retreat property, and we made it available to the congregation for a love offering to help us repair our tractor and some of the things that are needing some attention out there. But we had so much, I had this crazy God idea, and that was, well, maybe we could give some of the mistletoe to some of the homeless people around the area, and as they're holding up their signs for for help, maybe they could add a line on their sign, mistletoe for sale. You know, I don't know, crazy idea, but I thought maybe, maybe it would have some meaning or just put a smile on the face of people who were, were homeless. And so knowing that Brian has a passion and has had for many years of serving and helping our homeless community, I approached him. And he was open to the idea and tried the idea, and a couple of people were interested, but it didn't take off the way that, that I thought maybe it would have. But in the exchange that Brian and I had had, he said, you know, do you mind if I do some other things with the mistletoe? And would you basically hold in prayer that I have things I try to collect to give to the homeless when I go and I visit with them and I meet them? And maybe you have some of these items or no others who have these items. So he gave me a brief list in an email, and the list was six warm hoodies, six tube-style hats, 12 pairs of tube socks, six yoga mats, four backpacks, and two large print Bibles. And I thought, all I have to do is stand up on Sunday morning, and it's done. And so I said, I'll do that. And he said, no. He was nicer than just a quick no, but it was basically, no, they can't be new. They can't be new. They have to be things that people already have. And so I said, why? <laughs> and this is what he wrote me. We're both New Yorkers, so I call him brother, and he calls me sister. <laughs> My dear sister, there are a few reasons that I ask those who want to help not to go out and purchase new items specifically for the project. It has been my experience when I explain right up front that helping my outdoor friends, is that not beautiful? That helping my outdoor friends will not cost them anything on time or money. I can get a lot more people involved, especially those who live from paycheck to paycheck just to get by. I explain that if I personally do not have any of the items we currently I explain that if they do not personally have any of the items we currently need, they can ask their friends and friends of their friends if they have them. So no matter how much a person may have or do not have in their wallet, everyone has the ability to get involved. This builds a strong community of givers that are willing to give time and time again. I know it's ironic but it is mostly those who have little who want to help those who have less. I can tell you from a personal perspective, for many years in my practice, I made an outrageous amount of money. There were times when my wife and I were able to write $1,000 checks for those in need. But in writing out those checks, I am sure I did not feel as satisfied as the man I witnessed after leaving an Eric Butterworth service taking off his socks and putting them on a homeless man who was trying to stay warm by lying on top of a subway vent during one of those brutal New York winter days. This was on Fifth Avenue in Columbus Circle, one of the most affluent sections of Manhattan. Most of those scurrying about were too busy to notice that they were stepping over another human being and trying to get the things they needed to celebrate the holidays. I thought to myself, I want to attend the church that this man goes to. 
then I realized I just did. <laughs> so in regards to can I use more, the answer, of course, is yes. But now I live in a very small apartment and have limited space. I think it may be best for now if I continue to work with smaller groups. Oops. This is a big group. God has always provided us with what we needed when we needed it. Thank you, Rabbi, for all you do to inspire all of us in the community to transform our world with love. So I don't know what we're going to do when all this stuff starts coming, Brian, but we'll figure that out. But the point is, the point is, we, it's natural for us to want to give. And even if we can't write out checks, if we are committed to living a spiritually open life, we are committed to living a generous life, generous within the ways that we can be. And so whether it is your used tube socks or hats or yoga mats, we already know somebody who knows somebody's that need those things. 